we are back once again for what has suddenly become my absolute favorite competition in the Hunter Classic, and if you saw the last video, you will already know what I'm talking about, but to quickly explain it, basically, you need to harvest the heaviest bison from a shot of 55 to 65 meters using any crossbow, and while that sounds really easy, if you alert the bison, if they even know you're there, they will basically take off running and be gone before your crossbow bolt gets to where they were standing. So, there's two ways to approach it. You can either sneak in and basically hope that the bison you're sneaking up on is big enough to place in the comp, or you can run at them and try to lead them with the crossbow bolts. And that turned out to be an absolute blast last time, and that's going to be our approach today. So, perhaps a good practice opportunity here, because this is not a particularly large bison, but... Basically, the way that we had to do it was lead them by just enough so they'd run into it. We... I guess the tree was in the way? Or did he run behind the tree instead of in front of it? I'm not sure. Surely I should have known there was going to be a tree there. It looked like it was going to be close. Good practice opportunity, not that it matters. It's almost exactly the same as last time. Right around 800 kilos would get us into third place. But... You know, would it would have been nice to hit the first shot. I don't think this is gonna work though. At least it will all but guarantee getting a kill here early on because typically the ones that are charging are not too hard to hit. Not really sure why it went that way, but double along with the crossbow should bring down a bison pretty quickly. It's an odd thing with them. They're one of the only species that a double lung from like a powerful rifle won't insta drop, but they actually don't run as far when hit, say, with a double lung, as some species do with a single lung using a bow or something like that, but at least we got something down. Hopefully, though, that little bit of practice and just kind of getting back into the groove of trying to do this will help us out. There was a herd of bison, and I really don't know if this one was with them or just like a random solo, but just up ahead of us here, we should get another opportunity, but sometimes them charging and, and taking a shot can spook them, so we'll see. They are still here, but... It's looking like it's going to be another practice opportunity, as this male going up to 740 is about as good as it gets. Now, we haven't really tried it at an angle like this, which I kind of think should mean we need to delete it a little bit less. Maybe like just out in front of it, he's going to move, so we'll scoot in a little closer. We've got to keep the range between 55 and 65, and also need to consider that he's going to cover just a couple of meters there before the bolt actually strikes him. That was... Not exactly the mistake we made last time, but we would have actually gotten a competition trophy had we not messed up the distance. I think it was like 54.9 meters, and of course, got to be between 55 and 65. So, no clue where that hit. It may have been intestines. Probably should have still let him a little bit more, but on one that would be, you know, really good odds of, of maybe... Wow. Got a long shot. On one that would be maybe good odds of, of being top three... We'd be a little more selective about the angle that we take a shot at, but maybe we should just do more of that. That that wasn't hard. Like, it was just kind of natural. Lead just sort of in front of, like, say, the, the left horn in that particular case. It just sort of made sense. But this is why this is so much fun to me. When you can have a shot that ends up hitting just perfectly, when you get that lead just right, it really is just... It's super satisfying. To me, it's more satisfying than landing a regular 62 meter shot on one that we've been patient and snuck in on. 12 CSS, by the way, so not bad, but that puts us in fifth place for the moment, and I feel pretty confident this time. Last time, it was kind of something that we figured out towards the end, all this time sneaking around trying to get into the right spot. I like this kind of faster approach, but it still has that difficulty factor. You can kind of do it two different ways. You can be super patient, you can try to pick the right bison and all that, or you can just go for shots like this, which definitely are a little ooh, a little more difficult, but I find it to be a lot more fun. That guy could very well get us somewhere. 780 to 850. We got to make sure that we have the distance correct. I think we're going to try to get right on 60. That would probably give us the most likely chance of, regardless of what direction he goes, staying in that 55 to 65 window. So got to get it just right, right in there somewhere. He definitely knows we're here. Just need him to stop again. Okay, so I was wondering, could they ever turn another direction? And he did, but it still hit him okay. 
it still hit him in the lungs, unbelievably. What is that luck? I'm gonna have to slow-mo that and see what the heck happened. But I was curious, like, one other strategy I was considering was getting out in front of the bison and assuming they would just flee towards me as if they would always run the direction they're facing, but that clearly is not the case. That's kind of cool, but we got them plenty good. And the other factor that I was going to mention here that obviously is not going to be necessary in this case is that we could hit them, you know, in the knee. It, it won't matter. Any animal shot with a bow in the Hunter Classic will eventually die. In the case of a bison with a body shot, it takes about a real hour. But we have that kind of time. We could just mark the track and come back to it later. But here, somehow, we got a lung. So as we head up here to recover this guy, naturally like a single lung shot is going to take a little bit of time for them to expire. It's typically like three minutes. And I'm pretty sure he's actually still got a little bit of that time to go. The way he's laying, I'm pretty sure he's not actually gone down yet. But they won't jump back up. So at the end of the day, it's just going to be a matter of time. But I went and looked at the competition leaderboard as he just went down. And 804 is third place so even in the amount of time that we've been hunting and it's only been 30 minutes a kind of increase has been made to the number that we need i still think this guy's got a pretty good shot of going over that and he is 817 kilos right lung at 58.6 meters we actually got top three this time that doesn't mean it's going to stay there but last time that was something we were not able to do so already an improvement but certainly not one with, I think, 15 hours to go in the competition where I want to just kind of abandon it and go and do something else. We will continue trying to improve, but that's pretty cool. And, you know, I'd love to know if I'm the only one doing this strategy or if it's kind of what everyone does. I don't find it incredibly difficult. It's definitely risky, and I would still say it's probably more difficult than just trying to sneak in, but it depends on how you approach it. If you're only hunting for that competition and your only goal is to get one, say, like, above 850, most bison you can just ignore and you don't have to worry about it. But in our case, just trying to get top three in whatever way we can, any bison that kind of goes up to, like, 810 right now would have a chance. And that means we're going to be shooting more of them. And because of that, our options are be patient and not see as many bison or do this. And I quite like this approach. It's a great problem to have, don't get me wrong, but this is the one thing that can kind of occur with a competition like this. Because it's not, say, like, mule deer or elk or whitetail, where you get a grunt, you just call the animal in, or, or you get a bugle and call the animal in. You kind of can be a lot more selective, and it can be tough. We're not going to see a ton of bison with an estimate that's going to go way up above, like, 820. So what I want to make sure we do is kind of continue practicing and, and staying ready should we see one that goes up to, I think it's 900 or 910 is the max estimate. Because if one like that would show up, that has real potential to just basically lock in the number one slot. And it's probably as good a time as any to note that, okay, I don't know why he didn't run, but just got smoked in the face. That'll be interesting to track, but anyway... The competition's not going to be over by the time this video comes out, so I won't even know if we're going to end up top three or not. So I think that'll be interesting. Uh, by the time you're watching this, if it's the day that the video releases, feel free to jump on White Rhyme Ridge and, and try to get top three. And if you do, record it and tag me in Discord. I kind of want to see like if you guys take this approach. This might just be the saddest herd of all male bison I've ever seen. There's not even, like, a halfway decent one. Got another light fur type moose up there, but I guess we'll just try to shoot one of the broadside ones. In this case, I'm not sure they know we're here, so we could probably sort of aim normally, which is not something we've done a whole lot, but need one of them to sit still for a moment. This guy's about to, I think. Or maybe not. Yeah, he didn't end up fleeing at all, which I just happened to see them walk kind of out towards the river there. And just that still, like, that is an option too, but typically they're going in any other direction, and it doesn't allow you to do that. So, we gotta find the blood from the first one, which should have been roughly here. The other one is dead right there. And I'm not, like, dead set on finding that one that we shot in the head, but I kind of wanted to see what happened. For whatever reason, though, there, there's just bison all around the river. They've fled and just stopped inside, I guess. 
That worked a little more like it's supposed to, probably still a touch too far back, but again, it just kind of allows us to stay sharp for when a opportunity may arise. So let's get this one. Still another one standing up there, and I haven't seen any blood tracks from the other. And again, I'm not that worried about it. We may just let it go. That was close then I realized at 48 meters, but no big deal when it is way below the weight of the other one that we shot. And then the real question, the blood on that one was intestines, so that's still a huge difference. It's probably 20, 30 minutes till that one goes down. So what we do is mark this, and then because we're likely to end up marking something else by the time we get back here, draw an X over that marker and we can go back in a little while and track him down. Well, unfortunately, our little kind of run around to pass some time really hasn't produced anything, and we're back here roughly where we shot the last one, and there are just bison everywhere, and rather than just getting attacked over and over, I think if we just kind of fire off a rifle shot, might as well take something in the process rather than just spooking everything for no good reason. That should allow us to hopefully track down our bison that we shot in the intestines and kind of move on. What I'd like to do is follow this river up and around, and then spend more time down in here. Obviously, like a straight path through, we could have missed a lot of stuff. So that's going to be the approach anyway. But before we get to that, we still have what I assume is going to be a fairly long track. And it's been at the moment like 26 minutes or something like that. Again, if the bison has bedded, it won't get back up. But if it hasn't bedded yet, and we bump it, that could significantly increase the time it takes to actually recover it. So we'll probably get on the track and just kind of walk it. And hopefully by the time we get there, it's gone down. This I could not have predicted. The tracks are just gone. And it could be the amount of animals that were over here. Obviously multiple herds of bison, there's moose around. It may just be that. And we could end up recovering it. We stumbled into the one in the last video. But I think it wasn't a bison that gives us any shot at maybe being top three. Probably best that we just kind of let it go, but there was no way that I thought 25 minutes the track would be gone. You know, this is a thing that happens from time to time. We've shot a couple of moves like this before, but this may be about as extreme a case I've seen. It's just the influence of Truex. Sometimes the main beams kind of lean back a little bit more and it causes quite a strange looking moose, but as we kind of head up this river here, there was one bison up there, kind of at the top of that hill, which was a female, and it seemed to be by itself. We'll still kind of check around, but I don't think it's going to hurt much. Now, how? I know I just saw one. Either it somehow had popped out of render, or maybe that's just a completely separate one walking into render. We'll figure out somewhat shortly what's going on over there, but for now, I want to go into trophy shot mode with this guy, because... That, it ends up being a 140 scoring moose, but it's one of the kind of wilder ones I've seen. I mean, there's almost nothing. A couple of times that are actually in front of the forehead, everything else is leaning way back. I mean, look at this. Typically, this trophy shot pose, the antler doesn't go through the shoulder, obviously. Here it's like, bad. And I think this does a decent enough job of kind of showing it, so all that good but it's just one of those things that while we've seen it before we won't see all that often and it's usually fun to take them out and get to take a look as far as i can tell though that bison is by itself we'll probably end up letting it go just because i intend on going back the other way here pretty much as soon as we look down over the hill you know i think this is the bison from the beginning where we actually hit the tree I wonder if we can manage to end up getting him. We need to make sure we get this lead just right. That would have been close. We might have been just a touch too far forward, but we're working our way back kind of towards where we hunted at the beginning of the hunt. And I just want to check some of these areas that could be overlooked, like down in here. At the beginning, typically bison aren't really over there, but now being almost two hours into the hunt, there's a chance that some could have wandered over that direction that wouldn't have been there towards the start. Blood here is looking not so good. It is a body shot. I'm really not too sure what the move here is going to be. We may, if we see it again, just hit it with 300. Because it's not as if this is one that's going to make a difference for our competition. But it would be nice just to kind of see what we would have been missing out on from the start of the hunt. So if we see him again, maybe that's going to be the move. But for now, we can continue up through here and at least, you know, 
taking a tap rather than just spooking some bison that otherwise wouldn't matter. Ooh, 820 to 890. I thought that looked huge from a distance. Forget the other ones. That, that has a legit shot of being like top three. So that's one that we just shot. I hate to just leave him there, but we're gonna. Maybe we'll end up finding him again, but I really think that could end up way up there. The scoresman itself of 120 to 135, you typically, and maybe we should, now nah, we're gonna we're gonna stick with the theme. We're gonna go with the lead him into the shot. You typically won't get a bison that scores high, that does not weigh pretty pretty close to the top of what bison can weigh. So I think this could be something. Got to make sure we get our shot distance correct. And as much as I, you know, was thinking we should sneak in, the whole idea here is take that shot with the lead out in front of them and get them to run into it. We're not going to back away from that now. So he's going to turn in our way. We saw before they will turn. So we want them to be as broadside as we can get them. I think that's for the best. And this might work. There's no doubting he knows we're here. Going to do that same thing of getting right to 60 meters. Just because that kind of ensures that he's not going to be able to get to the wrong distance. Man, I think that hit perfect. It looked just right. Even if it's intestines, this time we're not going to like leave his track. I think we did it. As long as the range is right, and it should have been. I think we got that to work. Let's see what the blood shows. I can't quite tell with the vegetation in the way. That is lung blood. Unbelievable. He's dead right there. There's no way. I was literally just thinking after we messed up that previous shot and it was a body hit that like we've kind of regressed. We had lung shot, lung shot, intestines, body. When it mattered and yeah, I hope we got the distance right. We managed to kind of get back on track. Is this going to be the right distance? And will he be heavy enough? And heck, he's going to be a nice bison. Regardless of anything else, it'll be a good one. Let's see. 59 meters, 868, and a 126.5 score. Are you kidding me? That's huge. That's way bigger than any bison I've ever shot. 124-ish is my best. And I know, like, being too bigger doesn't sound like way bigger. That's way bigger. Is that first place? You are... <laughs> that is unbelievable. I seriously can't believe that just happened. <laughs> I want to see... We're going to be, like... Competition leaderboard's one thing. We're going to be decently high on the, like... Scores leaderboard. On our dumb little fun strategy here for a competition. This is amazing. And perhaps one of my favorite trophy shots, and this just wouldn't be possible under normal conditions, but because it's kind of like cloudy, snowy, we don't get the, the shadow being in the wrong direction. There's just kind of no shadow right now. So we get this really cool effect with the sun in the background and going through the snow. That's insane. I'll, I'll go and check our leaderboard position. In the meantime, we'll kind of start wandering back towards that other one we hit just to try to get him, but I'm in disbelief. That's incredible. Number eight on the leaderboards right now for Bison. And I think we're in like a fairly new-ish season, so that might be partially responsible, but still, that's insane. I We also just walked up on this Bison. I didn't know he was there when I started talking. That just kind of worked out. But I think we're going to try to just get him down. Just kind of see what happened there. And again, this was like the first Bison we shot at. An hour and 45 minutes ago, maybe? And at this point, I, I don't know that there is a lot of point in kind of continuing with that competition. The odds that we top that are just not that good. And, you know, we've had a really solid hunt here. We got ourselves our biggest bison ever. What I want to do instead is go back to the trophy lodge. Hit him in the skull, actually, at 60 meters. But that's absurd. Again, if you guys, this competition's still ongoing uh, until by the time this video drops, it's going to be maybe nine hours-ish left if you want to go and you know try this out like i said send me videos do it in discord i think it's a really fun way to do this competition but uh 868 kg and a monster 126.5 so 127.5 ish is about as big as they get so that's absurd i went back and took a look our previous best bison at least it was in the trophy lodge was 124.1 
So an increase of 2.5, again, for something that maxes at 127-ish, is pretty absurd. I'm honestly so stoked with that. And we've been slowly able to make a couple of additions to this lodge. Our Hirschfeld not that, not that long ago, which also was for competitions, not for a wild boar comp, but we got ourselves a 1200 plus wild boar, which still not sure I'm 100% happy with the skull mount, but better than not having it in the lodge anywhere. And now we have the bison. 126.5. I never thought I'd see the day that we'd get above 125. The amount of big tracks, high estimate bison that we followed that never got above like 124.1 or 2. Finally to have it done today and in the fashion that we did. You know, leading it into a shot with the crossbow. Just a dumb strategy that we came up with last time and it worked. And we may get top one. We'll see. I'd love to get the golden trophy. I don't know, I guess maybe just next week when we come back to Classic for another video, we'll take a look and see what placement we get. But for now, I'm just, I'm super happy to have this in the lodge, no matter what happens. We got a giant bison, and I think whether it gets a trophy or not, that is just really, really cool. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.